Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing really, really well. It's December, so I have basically been playing Michael Bublé non-stop. Although, I have gotten very into Frank Sinatra Christmas music this year, which I feel, I feel like that's the more, that's the more traditional one, right? So I kind of feel slightly bad. I haven't really done that before. <laughs> I say this like it's revolutionary, it's really not. That does remind me though, and I'm gonna put this on my Instagram as well, I'm gonna put like a little box so you can put their Instagram handle and stuff. But if anybody knows of current singers and songwriters that are releasing that kind of old school swing kind of style of music, I would love, love, love to know because I just love that music. It just brings me so much joy and it's been what I've been listening to the majority of the time over the past mm, yeah, a few months. So yeah, if you know anybody who is currently releasing in that style of music, then please, please, please do let me know and I would, yeah, I would just love to give them some support and yeah, find some, find some new music. New but old, but old but new. You know what I'm saying? For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Heather and I'm a professional viola player living and working in the UK and I make videos just all about musician life and freelance life and stuff that I hope will be helpful to you in a mildly entertaining way. I don't know, I mean, I sometimes find myself funny, I don't know if anybody else does. Today's video was actually inspired by a lovely message I got on Instagram and it was from a young lady who is currently going through the audition process to get into music school and she was asking for some advice on what to look for when you are going shopping for an instrument. She mentioned that there is very little information out there for advanced students, young professionals looking to purchase a slightly higher quality instrument but maybe not looking at that top professional level yet. And when she said that, I was quite surprised. I was like, really? There's nothing out there? And kind of had a little bit of a, had a little bit of a search. And uh, there really isn't a lot. And the only videos that are really out there are from actual music shops. So they always come across, like they've got a little bit of an agenda. They're like, we have this in stock and we think you should buy it because blah, blah, blah. So I'm hoping that I can come across a little bit more impartial because I have no affiliation to any shop anywhere. So yeah, I hope that this will be really, really helpful. Again, as always, if anybody has anything they want to add, please, please do just pop it in the comments because you're only gonna be helping people. So yeah, please do let us all know. And don't worry, I will never be offended if somebody's like, eh, you missed out this really important point because if it's really important, then people need to know. So yes. So the first thing I really wanted to say is that where it is made is not the be all and end all who it's made by, all of that kind of stuff. Because often the instruments, for example, that come from France are often very, very highly regarded and for very good reason. However, just because it is made in France does not make it automatically better than any other instrument. So many of my colleagues are actually now looking into Chinese made instruments because the way they produce their instruments is that one person will make that one component of the instrument. So for example, somebody might be making the front of violas and that's all they do. And then the next person will make the back of the viola and so on and so forth. But because they just spend all of their time on that one component, they are really, really, really good at making each little piece. So when they come together, you can get some really, really lovely instruments for a fraction of the cost. So don't disregard a Chinese made instrument because I think there can be a little bit of a stigma from the past, again, for, for good reason, but I really think that they're starting to turn their reputation around in that kind of area. Don't get swept up in where your instrument is made because if it's not the right instrument for you, then it doesn't matter if Stradivarius himself made it. It's not gonna be the right fit for you as a player and that is the number one most important thing when you are looking for any instrument. Also consider copies of really well-known makers and instrument models made by smaller instrument makers. Lots of instrument makers start out by copying well-known instruments and these can result in some really really beautiful instruments that are often slightly nicer than the original. For example my teacher at college had an absolutely stunning viola. I'm pretty sure it was a Guadagnini but I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that but it was 
in that kind of ilk. It was hundreds of years old, absolutely beautiful instrument, and it was lent to her by a trust. She was asked to play it and, you know, very happily did so. But then there was a maker in France and he asked if he could make a copy of her instrument and she said yes, went through the whole process and then he gave her this copy to try. And she brought it into a lesson and I had the absolute privilege of playing both instruments and the copy was so much easier to play, it had a much more expressive tone to it and she actually ended up buying that copy and has now given her original instrument back to the trust. Keep an open mind, try instruments by smaller makers, if they're copies they're probably going to be really really well done and a lot of attention will be paid to the specific details that made the original so special. So yeah, try out ones that you might not automatically go towards because you might be surprised. Now talking about violas specifically here, the size of them is so so crucial. Violas are done in inches so you can kind of get anywhere between 15 and 18 inches and all the increments within that. Don't be tempted to go for a bigger instrument just because everybody around you will say the bigger the viola the better, the better the sound and all of that kind of thing. Whilst there is some truth in that because we know that the violas are really the wrong size to be what they are but you know that's a whole nother issue. But your comfort and your ability to get around the instrument without injuring yourself is the number one concern, okay? It will be really, really tempting to push the size and you're only going to regret it because instruments get heavy <laughs> and particularly violas, you know, you're holding your arm like this and supporting all that weight for a long time, okay? Particularly in orchestral rehearsals and in recitals and things like that. So yeah, don't be tempted to go for a bigger one if it's not within your physical comfort. Also, something to be aware of, and this isn't necessarily like don't buy the instrument, but check that the bigger size fits in your current case <laughs> because violas can come in all sorts of different dimensions. Sometimes the base is a lot wider than the top and not all cases will fit that. So just be aware before you get your lovely new instrument home and you want to put it in your lovely new case that you've just got for Christmas and it doesn't fit. So yeah, just be aware of it. Not necessarily a be all and end all, but just be aware. <laughs> Take somebody with you, ideally your teacher, but at least somebody who kind of knows what they're talking about. Having a second pair of ears is just invaluable. And also, if the person you take with you can play the instrument to you while you listen, that can also be so helpful. Because remember that an instrument will sound very, very different under your ear than it will to somebody at the other side of the room, back of a concert hall, all of that kind of stuff. Especially because trying out an instrument can get really, really overwhelming because often the changes and the differences between two instruments can be so tiny and you're just there going, but I like this about this one, but I like this about this one, but are they actually any different? Ah! And just having somebody to be like, that one sounds so much better to me from over here than the other one can just be absolutely game changing. So yeah, definitely, definitely take somebody with you. When you're trying out instruments in the shop, consider how well they are set up. And by that, I mean, what are the strings like? Are they good strings? Are they really old strings? Are they brand new strings that the shop's only just put on? Is the bridge sitting flush to the instrument? Is, is all of that working well? Bear it all in mind, because for me, when I got my viola, it had strings on it that didn't suit it at all. It was a real, real shame, really, because I could just feel that this instrument had more in it but I knew that the strings didn't work so first thing I did when I took it home to try it out was to change the strings and honestly it was a different instrument so just ask these questions of the shop they're probably selling it on behalf of somebody and it may well have been sat in that somebody's loft for years and that's just worth knowing because if you're like oh, it sounds a little bit closed then that may well be just because it hasn't been played for a few years so ask all of the questions and just bear it in mind because the actual instrument itself could be an absolute gem but it's got terrible strings on so just be aware that that might happen. Do you go for a new instrument or do you go for an older one? Now there are massive pros and cons to both and again a lot of it will probably come down to quite a personal preference. 
older instruments are often more expensive, partially just because they are older and they have lasted that long, which, you know, is fairly impressive, let's be fair. But also, wood changes over time. The instrument you're playing is kind of a living material in a way, so it will mature as the years go on and with playing and it will change and all of these things, which is quite fun but it often means that an older instrument will have a more mellow sound. It'll be a little bit less bright. So again, this kind of depends what you're wanting the instrument for, but a lot of people really want that more mellow sound out of a viola. So in that case, old can be a good way to go. However, like I was saying earlier, these new instruments that are coming in now are amazing and a lot of them have that mellow quality straight from the off which is incredible so that's why i'd say don't discount the newer instruments because they're often a lot cheaper and price is not always an indicator of quality if you buy a new instrument as well bear in mind that it will change and adapt to you and your playing if you're the first person to play on an instrument you're kind of setting it up for the rest of its life in a way and that can be a really really lovely thing because it will adapt to how you play which is one of the beauties of string instruments is that they do change in sound and feel depending on who is just holding them and playing them but that's also a slight con because the instrument may change so if it's really really brand new then it won't have settled yet and its sound will probably change slightly as you play it more and more and more. Now, normally that sound improves for the better because it's settling down, it's opening up, often, like I said, it'll get a bit more mellow, all of those things, but it could go the other way and you could find yourself not actually liking it as much once it's changed. Something worth bearing in mind with older instruments is that they can often be a little bit more temperamental, I like to say, and by that I mean that they will react more to things like temperature changes, humidity changes, if you're playing on it really loudly like a big symphony it might go a bit more out of tune, all of that kind of stuff, and that's again partially to do with the age of the wood. Like I said, it's still kind of a living material and that will react to the changes in the weather and the temperature and all of that kind of stuff. So just bear in mind that it might be a little bit more finickety. A big bonus of purchasing new is that often you can commission an instrument from a particular maker. And this is actually often not as expensive as you might think. If you're buying from an instrument shop, bear in mind that there will be a markup on that because the shop needs to make some money off the sale. So, you know, it makes sense. Whereas if you go directly to the maker themselves, there won't be that markup. So if you find a maker that you particularly enjoy or that you know your friend plays on, ask them, go to them, say, this is my budget, what could you do? And in my experience, again, double check this before you sign anything, but you are never obligated to then buy the instrument that they make for you. So if they make you an instrument, you try it and you're like, well, I, I hate it. <laughs> then you're not actually under any obligation to buy it. In some cases, you might lose your deposit, but generally speaking, you won't then actually have to purchase the instrument and they may well go, okay, great, I can tweak it. And you have that more collaborative experience with them. Obviously, this can take a long time, and particularly more popular makers can have pretty long waiting lists, and it takes a long time to make an instrument. So that can be a really, really great route to go down, but only if you're not in a rush. Take your own accessories with you. So take your own bow and your own shoulder rest. You will only get the best feel for an instrument if you yourself are comfortable and as much in your element as you can be. And often the shoulder rests that a shop will have just won't really quite fit you right, and particularly if you're using a bow that you're not used to, that can warp the whole process. So 100% take your own bow because then you will get the best idea of that instrument. Now, it is worth saying that if your bow is of a lower quality, then maybe ask your teacher if you can have a go on one of their spares and get used to it in a couple of lessons beforehand and then use that bow to try instruments out. But just don't use a brand new bow with a brand new instrument because often you won't know which of the two is the one that you really, really like. So try and keep as many variables consistent as you can, especially between the different instruments that you're trying. So say you've got four violas to try, use the same shoulder rest and the same bow for all four. 
And then just a couple of little extra things to tag on the end. Play scales when you are trying out an instrument. It can be really, really tempting, particularly if you've got a few people in the room with you, to try and play something very impressive and sound really, really good. It's not about that. It's about finding the instrument that works best for you. And the best way to do that is to play the simple stuff first. So scales of at least three octaves so that you can try out the real range of the instrument and the full range that you are going to be playing it in. And also trust your gut because you will know if you like this instrument or not really, really quickly the majority of the time, okay? I definitely had times where I picked it up, played three notes, was like, eh, no, <laughs> like it's not for me. So that's another reason why scales can be really, really helpful because you are actually solely focused on that instrument. What does it feel like to play? What does it sound like? Whereas if you're playing something complicated, then you're worried about the music and, and the technique of it all, rather than what does the instrument actually sound like? So keep it simple keep it to the basics, and you'll get the best idea of what that instrument can do. Now, it's worth saying at this point that once you've got a better idea of the instrument, then go for the more complicated stuff. Because obviously you want to know that it's going to speak well at speed, that it's going to cope with different kind of bowing techniques and all of that, different dynamics, but start with the basics and build on that as you get to know the instrument. And then last thing is just a really, really good question to ask. When was it last played because this makes a huge difference in how the instrument will sound. If it has been sat, like I said, in someone's loft for years or it might have been sat in that shop for months and not played, that's a really, really good thing to know. And bear in mind that it might sound a little bit closed off if it hasn't been played for a long period of time. For example, my viola, if I don't get it out of its case for a couple of days, I can tell the difference. And a couple of weeks and it's really, it's not happy with me, I can tell you that. So bear it in mind because you'll probably find that within even just a few minutes of playing, it'll open up and you'll get a little bit of a better idea of what that instrument is capable of. So that's everything that I came up with sort of in my little brainstorm. If there's anything else that you would like to know, if you want anything a bit more specific, if you want me to do one of these videos but on how to choose a bow, then I am more than happy to do that. And like I always say, these videos are to be helpful. <laughs> so I want to make videos on what you guys want to know about and yeah, so just always Come follow me on Instagram, it's just heathers underscore plan and drop me a message. I am always checking it and I would love to help you, chat to you. And like I said, this video idea came from a message and sometimes it's really hard coming up with video ideas. So uh, help a girl out. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, subscribe to my channel. It makes a huge, huge difference. But yes, I think that's everything. I'm gonna stop waffling now and I'm gonna let you go. So I will see you guys next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Have the best, best week. I'll see you later.